horrible for him. Crying, rolling around in the dirt, trying to get away. You hear about animal abuse cases all the time, and up until now, only the pet and the owner suffered. Now, the abuser could suffer extreme consequences as well. This is News 3 at Noon with Sue Manteras and Scott Hawes. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Two high-profile animal abuse cases in Las Vegas have led to a move to toughen penalties for those responsible. A bill being discussed right now up in Carson City is getting a lot of support. Kurt Goff sat in on a hearing via closed-circuit television this morning, and Kurt, the name of the bill is SB 62. A simple name, yes, indeed, for a very powerful piece of legislation. It's a bill with a bite, all right. Animal cruelty is a misdemeanor in Nevada right now. This law would change all of that. Back in October, Blue, Centennial High School's mascot, was kidnapped and forced into a dogfight. Battered and bleeding, he was tied to the ground on a football field. Toby the Dachshund was dropped on his head. Karen Wagner's German Shepherd puppy was doused with acid. Acid was also placed in his face. People shouldn't be getting away with it. You know, if it's kids doing it, if it's adults doing it, they should pay for what they're doing. You know, animals have feelings and, you know, it's wrong. Today, a state subcommittee listened to opinions on SB 62. Backed by a petition with more than 4,000 signatures, a group of folks in Las Vegas made their opinions known via satellite television. Um, animal abuse just lays the foundation uh, for some of our most famous or infamous serial killers uh, that are well known around the country. They all started with animal abuse. The testimony is hard to listen to. We also heard of another incident, and I know it was mentioned earlier, about the uh, young boy who cut out the eyes of a golden retriever who was uh, later found wandering in the desert and had to be euthanized. You think uh, about it, someone does something like that to them, and they're still there. Senator the Ann O'Connell is sponsoring the bill, and, and even though critics say the hardline approach will clog the already overclogged courts, the pictures of rescued animals are tough to ignore. It's a very emotional issue, one that only seems to be gaining momentum. Now for the first offense, the new legislation would carry a penalty of anywhere from one to four years in prison and a $5,000 fine. A second offense would require mandatory prison time. Scott. Kurt, thank you. Senate Bill 62, if approved, would more than likely have several amendments added to it. Based on today's hearing, it seems like the legislation may only be a rough draft right now. We will keep you posted. Another form of cruelty involving animals and pets, cruelty to the owners. A pet scam where pet owners shell out money in return for their lost pet, but the pet never arrives. Hopefully this scam is coming to an end, though. This is video of a picture, actually, of a family dog that was lost. 31-year-old Catherine Melendish is behind bars in Reno and 39 year old William Munez has also been charged. He is, has, is under arrest in uh, California. Police say the pair would scan newspapers and flyers and looking for lost pet ads and then contact the owners with false hopes of returning their pets. Coming up in the next half hour of News 3 at noon, the story of one family that was a victim of this vicious prank. As our valley grows, so does the need for more medical facilities. But there is some good news. University Medical Center is set to open up its new emergency room and intensive care unit. If you've lived in the valley for a while, you know where UMC is most likely. But for those of you who have just moved here, this is where the new adult emergency center is located. Charleston and Shadow Lane on the west side of town. This ER is one of the largest in the country. The first floor is home to the emergency department. The new ER has six separate nursing pods with doctors standing by to handle just about any emergency you can imagine. There's a lab and a radiology center as well. That increases the effectiveness of the doctors, not to mention state-of-the-art equipment. We've had such terrific growth in the last uh, uh, 17, 18 years since I came to this community. I think the population of Clark County has tripled. Uh, that's huge because hospital beds, uh, emergency room beds, uh, and physicians have not tripled. UMC's emergency room staff treats 65,000 patients every year. The existing ICU will eventually be the home of UMC's heart center. And as the doctor mentioned, the staff has not tripled because there is a slight problem when it comes to ERs and hospitals. Of those 65,000 patients we have, we don't have a good nurse to patient ratio. That means we need more nurses in Nevada. There are several recruiting programs for nurses, particularly those that encourage students to take up nursing. According According to a federal report by the Department of Health and Human Services, right now in Nevada, 
there are only 520 nurses for 100,000 people. Flashing lights, blaring sirens, emergency vehicles do everything possible to get your attention on the roads, but it didn't work for one driver and it ended in a serious accident. The ambulance was carrying two patients from Pahrump on the way to UMC right here in Las Vegas last night when it collided with a truck south of Red Rock Canyon at the intersection of Highway 159 and Blue Diamond. Investigators say the truck's driver pulled onto the highway right in front of the ambulance. You can see the front of the ambulance right there. The ambulance driver says he tried to stop, couldn't, and slammed into the bed of the pickup. Another car was involved as well. Flight for Life had to take two patients on to UMC. Four other people suffered minor injuries in the wreck and were taken by another ambulance to UMC for treatment. This afternoon, officers are checking to make sure the ambulance did have its lights and sirens on. A follow-up now to that teenage shooting we told you about yesterday on News 3 at noon. The district attorney will decide whether the owner of the gun that killed the teen will face criminal charges. A 14-year-old boy was shot dead at the Budget Suites Hotel near Flamingo and Boulder Highway. Apparently, an off-duty security guard who lived at the suites let some teens play with his gun. Police say the gun was being passed around, and when the security guard tried to unlock it, it went off. The bullet hit the boy in the chest, killing him instantly. It's been over 20 years, but now Kennedy cousin Michael Skakel is arraigned in connection with the Martha Moxley murder case. Moxley was murdered back in 1975. There's Skakel in the middle of your screen. He was her neighbor. The judge set forth the arraignment despite Skakel's appeal of the decision to try him as an adult. Moxley's body was found on October 31st, 1975 in the family's yard in Greenwich, Connecticut. Skakel's father is the brother of Ethel Kennedy, the widow of Robert F. Kennedy. New details this afternoon on the sinking of a Japanese ship by a U.S. sub off Hawaii. Another U.S. apology. Outgoing U.S. Ambassador Thomas Foley has personally apologized to the Emperor and Empress of Japan for the accidental sinking. The National Transportation Safety Board also says the submarine sonar crew detected the Japanese boat 71 minutes before the collision. That day, the control room was filled with 16 civilians. One was allowed to sit at the helm and another was allowed to pull the levers that brought the submarine up to the surface. 26 people were rescued but nine are missing and presumed dead. The state of Florida is coming off its driest year in more than a century and continuing droughts across the state have been blamed for the spread of wildfires. Firefighters are hoping for some rain. But the forecast is grim. There's only a slim chance of rain in Polk County where a brush fire has burned 11,000 acres. Weary firefighters say without heavy rain, the blaze could burn for days. Now, since January 1st, more than 83,000 acres have burned in Florida. This place started as an out-of-control trash fire. After his death at the Daytona 500, folks here in the Valley are saying goodbye to race car driver Dale Earnhardt. And I love him, and I know you love him, and we all grieve right now, but it makes me feel better just to see you out here, and I just want to thank you. The general manager of the Las Vegas Motor Speedway spoke to hundreds of racing fans who came to pay their respects to Earnhardt last night. Banners and flags with Earnhardt's picture and famous number three were just about everywhere. Fans say the service was a way for them to say goodbye to a man who was much more than a race car driver. Earnhardt died when his car crashed into the wall in the last lap of Sunday's Daytona 500. His funeral will be broadcast on television tomorrow from Charlotte, North Carolina. Well, Barbie dolls, they've been around for, what, decades now. Chances are you have a daughter or granddaughter who has a Barbie item. But up next, a warning about one of those items. If you were to go online, you would probably be able to get some really good deals if you were willing to give permission, for instance, to be contacted later by advertisers. This isn't the only way to get a good deal on magazine subscriptions. Grab a pen and paper. Information you don't want to miss coming up at 12.15. Keep you tuned to News 3 at noon, where news comes first. I'm Beth Fisher. We've all heard that cell phone radiation could be dangerous. Now, one company claims it's created the solution to keep you safe. See if the cell phone shield really works today after Rosie on News 3. You're watching Southern Nevada's number one choice for news. This is News 3 at noon.
Welcome back everyone. A massive recall this afternoon of items that could pose a threat to your children. 850,000 Graco high chairs are on the recall list because the chair's legs can come loose. What happens is, is that a child just leans back in it, presses the footrest and boom, as you saw, the, ch the chair crashes to the floor and the child crashes with it. There have been over 100 injuries, including broken noses, black eyes, stitches, even a concussion. Now that's not it. Also on the recall list, a crib made by Simmons Juvenile Products. Defective brackets that hold the mattress in place could break, allowing the mattress to collapse. And then as you can see with this model right here, Trap the Babies, it was sold under the name Little Folks. And about 70,000 Barbie sunglasses are also being recalled. The frames have, as you can see right here, glitter on the sides that float in a liquid. The glasses can break, allowing a harmful chemical liquid inside to leak out. Now, so far, one six-year-old girl has a burned eye from those Barbie glasses. In many restaurants, along with the bill, you know, they give you a little peppermint candy. Sure. It's not for your breath, though. It's the not? power of peppermint coming up go. later. See what we learn here, and up next, how to get the best prices on magazine subscriptions. Plus, today is National Love a Pet Day. You can't have this guy, but I'm going to show you some lovable pets that you can get out here at the SPCA. All that, your forecast, and the Fredericks fact up next here on News 3 at noon, where news comes first. Give me four. Give me four. All right, you're the man. have a couple of magazines lying around right now. So how do you get the best price on those magazine subscriptions? Wait for a renewal notice, fill out the subscription card, answer junk mail from a magazine clearinghouse. Well, to save money, never take a magazine's first renewal offer. Usually, the closer the expiration date, the cheaper the renewal price. Check your expiration date, too. Many renewal notices come months or even years before your subscription ends. Sign up for a longer subscription if they'll give you a better price and negotiate. Many publishers will drop the cost if you simply ask, is this your best price? And one last tip, listen carefully to sales pitches for magazine deals. There are con artists out there who try to uh, trick you into paying hundreds of dollars for multi-year subscriptions. They wouldn't do that, would they? Oh, no. Never at all. Well, one person we know would never trick us when it comes especially to the weather, John Fredericks. And what a day, Johnny. Not only great weather, but National Love a Pet Day. It is indeed. So uh, two of my favorite subjects, pets and weather. And I did it all morning long, apologized about the wind, so I'll do it uh, at the top of the noon, get it out of the way. They hung around longer than I expected yesterday. But uh, like the old saying goes, if you don't like the weather today, just wait one day and more than likely it'll change in your favor. And it certainly has. We've got a little bit of a breeze out here. We're at the uh, SPCA, and today is National Love of Pet Day. We're going to parade a bunch of wonderful doggies and kitty cats across the screen that are available for adoption here at the SPCA. And of course, uh, don't forget, the number's always easy to remember, 873-SPCA. My boy's, uh, he's just wandering around. He's trying to get his uh, lay of the land, so to speak. Oh, oh let's not show that, Vaughn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, let's <laughs> talk about your forecast. All right. Ah, sometimes, folks, nature just calls. 59 degrees, 39% humidity, winds northeast at 6, barometer is falling at 30.20 inches of mercury. High temperature today. We'll try to squeeze another 7 uh, degrees out of it and get you up to uh, 66 your afternoon high temperature. And uh, the winds should remain generally light today as opposed to yesterday. They hung around a lot longer than I expected. Uh, the uh, clouds, the high clouds that uh, you're seeing now will be on the increase through the afternoon and the evening. Yesterday we made it to 64, even with the wind close to the normal 65. I checked our air quality, double checked it right before I left this afternoon or this morning. It's all in the good category. Sunsets this afternoon, just about 530. What's happening out there? Well, across the rest of the nation, uh, we continue to watch this huge storm that's just hammering Northern California and even parts of the Silver State up north of us. Now it's going to start drifting to the southeast and it's going to affect our forecast over the next couple of days. Not today. Across the rest of the nation, 78 in Miami and all the brush fires are making a smoky conditions very, very treacherous for central uh, my, uh, Florida, rather, as far as travel. 82 the high for Miami today, but sunny skies and maybe some lingering smoke. 74 today, gorgeous in Houston. Partly cloudy in mid to upper 
60s in Los Angeles, but once again, rainy from San Francisco over to Reno, and uh, also very, very windy across the East Coast today. The movie time was three hours and 14 minutes. The actual time was two hours and 40 minutes. What am I talking about? Movie running time, three hours, 14 minutes, but the actual time, two hours and 40 minutes. What am I referring to? Give us a call at 657-3425 if you have the correct answer. Oh boy, do I got stuff for you. I got two tickets to see uh, our friend Melinda. She's appearing over at the Venetian. She is the first lady of magic. Also, we have, um, oh my goodness, a royal feast for two. It's her Galahad's prime rib house inside the Excalibur. So dinner and a show for your first correct answer. Back here, we've got uh, one pooch who is just, uh, he, well, he's just an excitable boy today. That's my boy, Jordan. And uh, it doesn't need to be National Love a Pet Day for me to shower him with affection. But how would you like to uh, shower this little one with affection? What a cute one. Who is this one? Who's this, is, this? this is Rachel. She's a two-year-old black lab mix. Yes, she is. And she's just as sweet as she can be. Rachel is, uh, so she's two years old. She's a black lab mix. And she's available for adoption yes, now. she is available now. Okay, and do we know anything more about Rachel? Um, it, her profile says she is house trained. She does know all of her basic commands. She's a very good family dog, super loving girl. Yes, oh, thank you for those kisses. All right, if you'd like to uh, adopt Rachel, she's available here at the SPCA. Just give them a call or come on by. We're right behind the Dewey Animal Shelter. It's right off of uh, Decatur, south of Trop. Just come south of Trop on Decatur, hang a left on Dewey. We're right behind the Dewey Animal Shelter, the SPCA. And uh, first come, first loving family that comes and uh, qualifies for the adoption, you get to take home Rachel on uh, uh, National Love a Pet Day. She's just as sweet as she can be. Uh, coming up in the next half hour, we've got several more animals that we're gonna show from out here at the SPCA. Do we have some kitty cats we can maybe adopt out? Yes, we do. All right, so if you're not in the market for a doggy today, oh, man, she is just as sweet as, look at her. Isn't she wonderful? All right, she's already mic trained too. Mm -hmm. All right, give us a call if you'd like to uh, adopt Rachel or maybe some of the other animals. We'll have more, 873-SPCA. We'll have your extended forecast, got big changes to talk about. We'll have that and the answer to the Frederick's Fact coming up next half hour. All right. All right, looks like Rachel thinks it's National Love a Person Day. Oh, Every day for Rachel. That's nice doggy. pets do. Well, the taste of peppermint treats are not just for uh, freshening your breath. Up next, how they can help some deal with pain, too. And if you are worried about having a heart attack, listen to this. We'll explain why brushing your teeth might actually reduce the risk. Keep it tuned to News 3, where news comes first. Tonight at 5, parents at wit's end. We tried um, chiropractic herbs, a lot of different things. News 3 anchor reporter Kendall Tenney digs deeper. You've probably heard of Ritalin. It's a drug used for hyperactive children. Would not pay attention, would not follow directions. But now doctors are prescribing this powerful drug to more than 4 million kids, and in some cases, toddlers. Is it safe and is it right? Ritalin, wonder drug, or overprescribed quick fix. Tonight on News 3 at 5. Welcome back, everyone. There's growing evidence linking gum disease to an increased risk for other health problems like heart attack, stroke, and even low birth weight babies. So how can an infection of your gums affect other parts of your body? Dr. Dean Adell explains. When Bruce Goronsky woke up with a swollen mouth a few weeks ago, he was not surprised to learn he had gum disease. I got an emergency appointment with my dentist who said, oh boy, he said, this tooth, you've lost so much root on it, it's gonna go, and it looks to be like you've got some pretty serious gum problems here. Turn this way a little bit for me. What Garonsky didn't realize then is that the trouble in his mouth could lead to trouble in other parts of his body. He's already dealing with some high blood pressure. His periodontist told him his gum disease could increase his risk for coronary heart disease and stroke. I definitely wanna keep this problem in check. Gum diseases are infections that occur between the gum and the tooth, usually down in pockets like that. And what happens is the bacteria and their inflammatory products can get into the bloodstream and that can inflame blood vessel walls or stimulate clotting, which in turn can cause strokes, coronary heart disease, or even a heart attack. 
there's uh, one and a half to two times the increased risk of developing uh, these diseases if you have periodontal infection. An estimated 20% of adults in this country have gum disease, but it can be a silent enemy. Most of the time, symptoms for advanced gum disease uh, are non-existent until the terminal stages. You can go online to learn more about the causes of gum disease. The best way to avoid it is proper brushing and flossing and regular visits to the dentist. Baranski underwent a deep cleaning. His doctor says he already sees a great improvement in his mouth. I'm Dr. Dina Dell. If you would like to read the latest about the causes of gum disease and its link to heart attacks and stroke, log on to our website. There it is, kvbc.com. Simply click on the Health Central logo. Peppermint, it's not just a breath freshener, it's an herb packed with years of proven health benefits. Peppermint can be a remedy for ailments ranging from appetite loss to menstrual problems and fever to headaches. It helps to regulate the menstrual flow. Uh, it helps with uh, cramps. It can take the place of aspirin, indigestion, and, um, and gas, flatulence kinds of problems. Peppermint's active ingredient, menthol, is found in over-the-counter drugs such as cough drops, sore throat lozenges, and nasal decongestants. Peppermint comes in pills as a dietary supplement, in soap as an energizer, and in mints as a de-stressor. So, so good breath is just... Just a little extra ting in there. One of the bonus. We're well, supposed to de-stress, I guess, when you get that mint after so dinner. So grab three or four after dinner. The rest of the night's Are nice. most people stressed out during no, dinner? Hopefully not. Mm -hmm. Well, in the market for a new car, dealers are offering some big cash rebates. But coming up at noon, don't just consider the rebate. Take a look at the APR, too. We'll tell you how to determine which one is best for you. And a proposed bill to make animal abuse a felony. Right now, it's a misdemeanor. We'll tell you how you can help possibly get this bill to become a law. Also, a warning about a scam that involves your pet, your lost pet, and a lot of money. All ahead in the next half hour of News 3 at Noon. I'm Beth Fisher. We've all heard that cell phone radiation could be dangerous. Now, one company claims it's created the solution to keep you safe. See if the cell phone shield really works today after Rosie on News 3. Anytime and anywhere, you can get the most up-to-date breaking news in Southern Nevada. Just visit kbbc.com. We're setting the pace in cyberspace. Serial killers, Ted Bundy, David uh, Berkowitz, Jeffrey Dahmer, and the Boston Strangler tortured and killed animals, uh, taking, uh, this is in advance of taking human lives. These days, abusing animals is legally considered a minor crime in the Silver State, but a bill under review right now with the state legislature would change that. This is News 3 at Noon with Sue Manteras and Scott Hawes. Welcome back, everyone. Recently, we have seen two high-profile animal abuse cases right here in Las Vegas, and those cases are leading a charge to toughen penalties for those responsible. A bill being discussed up in Carson City right now is getting a lot of support. Kirk offset in on a hearing via closed-circuit television this morning, and Kurt, the, the bill is a Senate Bill 62. A simple name, Sue, for a very powerful piece of legislation. It's a bill with a bite, all right. Animal cruelty is a misdemeanor in Nevada right now, and this law would change all of that. Back in October, Blue, Centennial High School's mascot, was kidnapped and forced into a dog fight. Battered and bleeding, he was tied to the ground on a football field. Toby the Dachshund old, was dropped on his head. He messy, Karen Wagner's German Shepherd puppy was loud. doused he's with acid. Acid was also he's placed in his throat. Yeah, People shouldn't be getting away with it. You know, if it's kids doing it, if it's adults doing it, they should pay for what they're doing. You know, animals have feelings and, you know, it's wrong. Today, a state subcommittee listened to opinions on SB 62. And backed by a petition with more than 4,000 signatures, a group of folks in Las Vegas made their opinions known via satellite television. Um, animal abuse just lays the foundation uh, for some of our most famous or infamous serial killers uh, that are well known around the country. They all started with animal abuse. The testimony is hard to listen to. We also heard of another incident, and I know it was mentioned earlier, about the uh, young boy who 
cut out the eyes of a golden retriever who was uh, later found wandering the desert and had to be euthanized. Uh, you think about it, someone does something like that to them and they're still there. Senator Ann O'Connell is sponsoring the bill, and even though critics say the hardline approach will clog the already overclogged courts, the pictures of rescued animals are tough to ignore. It's a very emotional issue, one that only seems to be gaining momentum. Now for the first offense, the new legislation would carry a penalty of anywhere from one to four years in prison and a $5,000 fine. A second offense would require mandatory prison time. Sue? All right, Kurt. The bill, if approved, would more than likely have several amendments added to it. Based on today's hearing, it seems like the legislation may only be a rough draft, but we will keep you posted. And a warning from the Attorney General's office this afternoon about another kind of cruelty. Crooks have concocted an elaborate scam that you could easily fall for if you ever lose your free friend. As Nina Radicic reports, they wait for you to put an ad in the paper or a poster around town, then they move in to take your money. Oh, that's too far. Bring it here. A game of fetch, a favorite activity for Joyce Leota and her new dog. Her last beagle, Frankie, looked just like this little guy. He was a close family friend for over two years until he ran away last month. We went and searched for him, put the ads in the paper and posters up and checked with all the uh, uh, agencies to see if he was in the kennels. Then one day, the family got a cruel call. Someone said Frankie had been hit. We went and checked and he there was nothing there. It was, we assumed was a prank call. Then, a glimmer of hope. A few days after that, we got a phone call from a man who said he saw a dog get hit and he had picked him up. And he was uh, on his vacation. And he had picked the dog up and taken him into LA and took him to the vet. They paid to have Frankie sent back, but he never arrived. And then we called looking for our dog see when he would be coming in and uh, they switched us to different people and finally a supervisor got on and said well your dog won't be coming in that it's a scam. Nina Radetich, News 3. The Leotas paid the caller more than $500 for Frank's vet bills and his transportation back to Las Vegas. The dog was obviously never on the plane. Now, hopefully, this scam is coming to an end. 31-year-old Catherine Malinadish is behind bars in Reno, and 39-year-old William Munoz has also been charged and arrested in California in connection with this very scam. As our valley grows, so does the need for more medical facilities, and there's good news. Today, University Medical Center is set to open its new emergency room and intensive care units. If you've lived in the valley for a while, you know where UMC is, but for those who've just moved here, well, this is where the new adult emergency center is located, Charleston and Shadow Lane on the west side of town. This ER is one of the largest in the nation. The first floor is home to the emergency department. The new ER has six separate nursing pods with doctors standing by to handle just about any emergency you can imagine. There's a lab and a radiology center as well. That increases the effectiveness of the doctors, not to mention state-of-the-art equipment. We've had such terrific growth in the last uh, uh, 17, 18 years since I came to this community, I think the population of Clark County has tripled. Right. Uh, that's huge because hospital beds, uh, emergency room beds, uh, and physicians have not tripled. UMC's emergency room staff treats 65,000 patients a year. The existing ICU will eventually be the home of UMC's Heart Center. And there is a slight problem when it comes to ERs and hospitals here in the Valley. Of those 65,000 patients, there's apparently not enough nurses to help. Here in the Silver State, several recruiting programs for nurses, particularly to encourage students to take up nursing, are continuing. And according to a federal report by the Department of Health and Human Services, right now in Nevada, there are only 520 nurses per 1,000 people. Flashing lights, blaring sirens, emergency vehicles do everything possible to get your attention on the roads. 
but it didn't work for one driver and it ended in a serious accident. But at this point, officers aren't even sure if the ambulance was warning the other drivers. The ambulance was carrying two patients from Pahrump to UMC here in Vegas. It collided with another vehicle last night south of Red Rock Canyon at the intersection of Highway 159 and Blue Diamond Road. Investigators say the pickup driver pulled onto the highway right in front of the ambulance. That ambulance driver tried to stop but couldn't and slammed into the bed of the pickup. No one was seriously hurt, but Flight for Life had to come in and take those two patients onto UMC. Four other people suffered minor injuries in that wreck and were taken by another ambulance to UMC. This afternoon, officers are checking to make sure the ambulance was using its lights and sirens. Some new details this afternoon on the sinking of the Japanese ship by a United States submarine off the coast of Hawaii. Another U.S. apology to Japan now. Outgoing U.S. Ambassador Thomas Foley has personally apologized to the Emperor and Empress of Japan. Japan for the accidental sinking. The National Transportation Safety Board also says the submarine's sonar crew detected the Japanese boat 71 minutes before the collision. That day, the control room was filled with 16 civilians. One was allowed to sit at the helm and another was allowed to pull the levers that brought the submarine up to the surface. 26 people were rescued, but nine are missing and presumed dead. It's been over 20 years, but now Kennedy cousin Michael Skakel is arra has uh, arraigned in connection with the Martha Moxley murder case. Moxley was murdered in 1975, and Skakel was her neighbor. That's him in the center there with the tie. Skakel, well, the judge rather, set forth uh, the arraignment despite Skakel's appeal of the decision to try him as an adult. Moxley's body was found in October of 1975 in the family's yard in Greenwich, Connecticut. Skakel's father is the brother of Ethel Kennedy, the widow of Robert Kennedy. Coming up next, a look at Wall Street and some local stocks. And if you're in the market for a new car, dealers are offering some big cash rebates. But don't just take the rebate automatically. You could miss out on even bigger savings. Sometimes the financing is just too good to pass up. A closer look in about eight minutes. a day for everything yes. and today is national love your pet day but we love our pets all the time every day right. and of course uh, everyone here at channel three has kind of adopted jordan of course jordan belongs to john fredericks but hey if you don't have a pet go find a pet and john Adopt fredericks one. has the place to be right love your pet i tell you that you know, the love you get back is absolutely unconditional and uh you know what it may not be the westminster dog show but uh, these pooches and pussy cats they're a lot cheaper, and they'll love you just as much, if not more. And we've got uh, a couple of little uh, Pekingese here, and these uh, two, we're not entirely sure if they're related, but they're available for adoption. We just got them, and they, they were living in just absolutely deplorable right. conditions. In a laundry room. That's where they were raised, shut in a laundry room day and night. And, and they're just as sweet as they can be. Do we know, have any idea how old they are? I believe they're about two years old. Yeah, around two years old. And this is Chico. Chico and the man. And who's yeah. this over here? It's Coco. Coco and Chico. So we got a male and a female. No, I believe they're both males. Both males. Mm -hmm. Okay. And are they? have they been uh, neutered? neutered? They're, they're ready to go. And they're, they're ready, ready to go. 873 SPCA. And they have been raised together. And it would be nice if they could get adopted out together. It's not absolutely essential, but it would be, it would be nice for uh, Coco and Chico. And you can see that there's a lot of puppy love there. All right. Who's next on the uh, the old puppy parade? This is uh, this is JD. JD, JD is uh, apparently this uh, JD might be a f uh, we think he's a, a Australian Shepherd uh, purebred, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, and what an absolutely adorable animal! You are just beautiful. And what do we know about JD? Uh, JD's two years old. Mm -hmm. uh, he was turned in by a family. Okay. He's very very loving, very sweet dog. Uh, he has been an inside dog. They're uh, they're good around kids, aren't they? Yes, shepherds? they're really good around kids. Very protective, aren't they? Yes. And they're uh, they're just they're absolutely wonderful animals, and they they are great family pets. And uh, JD is available for adoption right now at the uh, Nevada SPCA 873 SPCA. Whoa! All right, careful, JD. Might get a little uh, scratchy on the nose. You want to uh, you want to show a couple of the little kitty cats here? Yes, Who's next here? Yeah, Who are we? Coming up. 
Who's this little one here? That's, uh, all right. Is the name baby or are we just calling her? Oh, kitty kitty. This is kitty kitty. Okay. <laughs> all right. A kitty so sweet we had to name her twice. Yeah. Okay. A and little female. Little female. See. She's front declaw. Mm -hmm. It's okay, Angel. And, and she's a medium hair. She's spayed and ready to go. And uh, about how old is she, do you I think? I would judge her to be approximately about a year. Okay. And she is very sweet and she's uh, ready to go right now. 873 SPCA. Okay. okay. I, I feel like we're on a telethon here. <laughs> and <laughs> Who's it? This one's spending some time at the buffet lines, I think. Careful, oh, Jennifer. Yeah, he's a big boy. He is a big boy. And uh, why am I putting the microphone in his face? Who's well, he, he will no doubt have a story to tell. He's a gorgeous man. We have so many wonderful adult cats. What's his name? His name is Baby. And Baby is uh, about how old? About three years old. And he's all ready to go, too? He's ready to go home. And uh, adult cats make such wonderful pets because you don't have to hassle with housebreaking them and teaching them not to climb the drapes and everything. You get an animal that's, you know, ready to sit on the sofa and watch TV with you. Okay, very good. Uh, another kitty cat available for adoption right now at the SPCA. Give them a call, 873-SPCA. Coming up, by the way, we do have a winner for the Frederick's Fact. We'll have that. Your uh, weekend forecast, big changes ahead, and we'll see if we can sneak in maybe another pooch or two before we're all done. Sue, so, Scott? Plenty of love and pets to go around. Thank you, Johnny. With auto manufacturers desperate right about now to get rid of these vehicles, buyers look like they're in the driver's seat when it comes to purchasing those new cars. But which is the best way to go, the rebate or the better financing? The answer in two minutes. And later, Mr. Food. Today's microwaves are cooking. Yeah, cooking. Faster and smarter and without all of the guesswork. What do you see? market for a new car, this may be a great time to buy. The big auto companies have a lot of vehicles in inventory due to poor sales last year. Now, which is the best way to go, though? Buy that car, take the lower APR, or the rebate? For example, 0.9% financing or a cash rebate of up to $2,000, which is better? According to the Edmonds Auto Guide, it depends on the consumer. If you're looking at a large rebate, for example, and you don't really quite have that down payment, even though you could make the monthly payment, it might be smarter for you to take the rebate, even though you could have saved maybe a few more dollars on the APR. On the other hand, say you, uh, you know, you're having a little problem on the month to month, but you've saved up a little bundle of money and you want to buy that car anyway, uh, for you, the best deal might be to go ahead and, and take the monthly payment. Edmonds warns that most of the rebates are on cars the manufacturer just wants to get rid of, not necessarily the car you want. If you have a trade-in, don't sell to a dealer because more than likely you will get lowballed. If you need a little more information on how to find uh, the option that's the best for you, check out the Edmonds site at edmonds.com or even check out money.com. Just click on the icon Best Cars 2001. And of course, we have built links to both these sites on our website, kbbc.com. Of course. And uh, I think it's time to go back to John Fredericks, only instead of pets, we're talking about weather, right? Well, yes, we're going to talk a little bit about weather, but we are once again here at the Nevada SPCA. It's turned out to be a beautiful day, some beautiful high, mainly cirrus clouds. And remember, folks, pets are friends for life. Today is National Love a Pet Day, and we're going to see if we can squeeze in maybe one more or two if we can uh, for adoption here at the Nevada SPCA before we're all said and done. But first, let's talk about the weather. It is decidedly calmer than it was yesterday at this time, and the winds did hang around longer than expected. We have some wonderful snow up in our local mountains. Ski conditions at the Las Vegas Ski and Snowboard Resort are phenomenal, and there is more snow on the way. Right now out of McCarran, the official reading looks like this. 59 degrees, 39 percent humidity, winds northeast of 6 barometer is strong and falling at 30.20 inches of mercury. The high temperature, if we're lucky, we might, we're going to be somewhere between 64 and 66. Right around normal, increasing high clouds, the wind should stay generally light out of the southwest, maybe uh, 5 to 7, 6 to 12, something like that. Even with the, uh, the areas of blowing dust, our air quality stayed all good 
carbon monoxide, ozone, particulate matter, all in the good category. And yes, folks, if you're wondering, we will start doing uh, our pollen and spore readings uh, very soon because it's uh, coming up into that time of the season. Yesterday, we made it to 64 with the wind. The wind, a result of that big area of low pressure, that storm is sitting there off the uh, California coastline. You can see it spinning around, bringing in rain and high elevation snow. And now it's going to start slip sliding to the southeast, bringing with it more wind for us tomorrow. Maybe some high elevation light snow tonight, and there's a chance of some valley rain in the next couple of days. Like I said, a possibility of maybe evening a light snow shower up on the mountain with beautiful conditions up there today. A nice day out on the water. Temperatures close to 70 degrees. The water temperature 54. And down in the south a little bit further along the recreational area along the river, that is, temperatures right around 70 degrees with uh, some afternoon increasing high clouds. All right, grab yourself pen and paper. This is where it gets a little tricky. Beautiful today, increasing high clouds. Afternoon winds are really going to pick up, even though it's still going to be warm tomorrow. Much cooler, chance of showers on Friday, locally windy on Saturday, and then another chance of showers on Sunday. Now, of course, folks, this is all subject to change, but that's the way it looks right now. The movie time was three hours and 14 minutes. However, it only took it two hours and 40 minutes to sink the Titanic. Now, of course, uh, the movie time covered a lot more than just the actual sinking event, but it is a little bit ironic that the movie actually ran more almost an hour longer than the actual sinking in the Titanic took. Congratulations to Adriana Human, a uh, human, I'm sh not sure I'm pronouncing that name. Human, thank you. Uh, got herself, uh, you to human. Got you, uh, ooh, dinner for two at Sir Galahad's Prime Rib House over at the Excalibur, and two tickets to see our friend Melinda over at the Venetian. Of course, she's the First Lady of Magic. This is Buddy. Buddy is an excitable boy. What is he, what do we think Buddy is? Buddy is an Australian Shepherd mix. What, okay. we, what he's mixed with, of course, we couldn't tell. Maybe a little healer or something in Possibly, there? Possibly, yes. Okay, and he's a sweet boy. He's, he's very excitable. He's got a lot of energy. He's, he's what, about two, two and a half? Actually, he's only about a year old or so. Oh, goodness. So he's got a lot of energy in him. So definitely he's going to take some commitment, but uh, Buddy needs to be adopted here at the SPCA. Keep in mind, this is our area's no-kill shelter. Once an animal comes here, it stays until it gets adopted out, and there are entire, uh, all the funding comes from folks like you and I. So if you can, if you can adopt Buddy, maybe you can send a donation to the SPCA and uh, help them out in maybe just a monetary way. Anyway, uh, Buddy and all those other wonderful animals are available for adoption right now on this National Love of Pet Day. Of course, the number here at the SPCA, 873-SPCA, committed to memory and uh, adopt a pet uh, you got a friend for life. In the meantime, I'm going to send it back to you in the studio, and I'll see you back inside there tomorrow morning. All right, Johnny, thank you. You could call it, well, a race to the <laughs> altar. Yeah, up next, you probably can figure it out. Hello. Oh, I don't know if you can or not, but these ladies are grabbing up something. We're going to tell you more when we come back. Today on First News 3 at 4, accused murderer Margaret Rudin is leaving Nevada. Find out where she's headed. Two big breakthroughs in the fight against cervical cancer. We'll show you a new test and a new vaccine that may help save your life. We've all heard that cell phone radiation could be harmful. Now one company claims it's found the solution to keep you safe. See if the cell phone shield really works today on First News 3 at 4. Over the past few years, a microwave has become a chef's best friend, and you've probably learned you can cook many things with a microwave. Mr. Food has a few more recipes to consider. Remember when our microwave was a novelty? Well, that novelty fast became the norm, didn't it? Yeah. In fact, they're in 90 million kitchens across America, and the numbers are growing. And some of today's newer microwaves aren't just for defrosting and warming. Uh, we can cook entire meals in them, and faster and smarter, and without all of the guesswork. Well, let's take a look. Today's newer models in loads of brands and price ranges offer loads of convenient options, like select the setting, which allows us to set time and temperature at a push of a button. Here's one that has sensors inside to let us know when the food is done. And overall, they've got more space and higher power wattages. And here's one that has something called inverter technology, which simplified means an even cooking temperature for our foods. You know, unlike the older style microwaves where, where it would run a bit, then shut off, then run again, which was like 
turning a stove on high flame and then on and off so that it was on only 60% of the cooking time. Here, we set our power level for exactly what we're cooking and it runs steadily at the proper heat. So we get better cooking results whether we're melting butter or, or simmering sauces or, or cooking a turkey breast or so many other foods that we'd never think of making in our microwave before. And today, with our busy lifestyles, having microwaves coming into their own certainly takes the guesswork out of cooking, which, which means that we can serve up loads more of quick and convenient, ooh, it's so good. Just nuke it, apparently. There with you the go. Just nuke yeah. it, right? There you go. If you'd like that recipe or any of the others that maybe you've missed this week, just send us a stamped envelope to Mr. Food Care of KVBC, P.O. Box 44169, Las Vegas, 89116. Or you can go directly to Mr. Food's website at what else? MrFood.com. Wow, he has his own website. Sure. Okay, well, today in Ohio, the perfect marriage between discount prices and high value. Look at this, my goodness. It was the annual bridal gown sale at Feline's in Columbus. These brides-to-be let nothing stand in the uh, way of their dream. Dr Look at that. They're just going at Look it. Look out, honey. I'm coming through. There you go. <laughs> it was a mad rush when the doors opened this morning. You saw those ladies flying in there. Dozens of women grabbed as many gowns as possible. Look at that. They waited in line just to get in for hours in the cold. It's cold in Columbus. Yeah. Well, once they grabbed the gowns, you know, they retreated to a mirror for a fitting. There they are again. 800 dresses were on the <laughs> racks, and each of them sold for only $250. <laughs> the dresses were gone within minutes. You saw those racks were just barren. empty within minutes. And half of them still haven't met that perfect somebody yet. <laughs> well, hopefully they have. Well, they'll have the dress, right? Yeah. It's only half the battle.